Hey, this is Dr. Scott Stevens, and today's topic is levels of measurement. In STAT, we're always dealing with data, but you may not have thought of it. Not all data comes in the same flavor. Some data is better than others, and that's what we're talking about today. Essentially, all data is not created equal. We're going to find out there are four different levels of data. Let me give you an idea of what we're talking about here. Here's an example of the lowest one. What's the average color of the cars now on campus? Well, in the little picture I've just shown you here, you can see two red and two blue cars, but the idea of an average doesn't really make sense when you're talking about colors. Saying that the average out to purple doesn't make any sense at all. You really can't talk about the mean when your data just deals with categories. The best you could really do is talk about the most common color, which is called the mode. We'll talk more about that later. We can add a little bit more structure to this kind of data by requiring that the various categories fall in some sort of natural order. For example, is it better to bake in an oven that's too hot or too cold? Well, the answer to that question kind of depends, doesn't it? I mean, there's a little too hot, and then there's a lot too hot. In the same way, of course, you could be a little too cold, or maybe your oven is a dual-purpose refrigerator as well. We can take those three categories of too hot, too cold, and just right, and put them in order, but we can't say how much they differ by. We have more structure, but not that much. Here's a third level of data, and this one actually is going to involve a numeric scale. You might say, for example, what time did you call the tech support line? You've called them up at 10 o'clock, and you've received a recorded message that tells you that they are open from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. So why are you getting this stupid message? Are they screwing up? Well, maybe. Or maybe it's because you're in Virginia and they're in California. As you know, California time is three hours earlier than East Coast time, so for them it's 7 a.m. They haven't opened up yet. You and California are disagreeing because you can't agree on where time starts. What would zero be? And this is a common problem with this kind of data. On the other hand, if the question is how long do they keep you on hold, it's interesting to see that you'll both agree on that. You may say, I called at 11.02 and you didn't take my call until 11.48. Subtraction tells you that you waited 46 minutes. They won't agree with the time. They'll say you called at 8.02 and they answered you at 8.48. But the subtraction gives the same answer, 46 minutes. The calculation done by subtraction gives a perfectly sensible answer on either scale. Addition works fine too with data like this. But the kind of data that we'd like to deal with most is data where everything works, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And most of the time, when you're dealing with numeric data, this is what you're going to see. In such a system as this, zero has an unambiguous meaning. It means none at all. And when that's the case, you can generally do all the kinds of addition that you want, all the kinds of arithmetic that you want. An example of this would be, for example, your score on an exam. On the other hand, your score alone might not be enough to satisfy you. You probably want a summary of how your work is compared to other people. I'd like you to think about what kind of summary information you might like, because that's one of the questions we're going to be addressing when we get to Chapter 3. But for right now, let's stick with what we've got. Four different levels of measurement. The four categories I've talked about each have a name, and the names commonly given to them are from lowest level to highest level, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. You're going to need to know that. The easiest way to remember them and their order probably is with a mnemonic. I think about film noir, you know, the kind of movies with Humphrey Bogart. N-O-I-R gives you the four letters, levels, and in their order. We're going to talk about each one in turn. Let's start out with nominal. The first level of data is nominal, and the word nominal comes from the Latin nomen, meaning name. Many languages, for example, French, use nom as name today. And nominal data is essentially just the names of categories. When data is nominal, you can put it into a category. You can count how many observations there are in a category or what fraction of observations are in that category. But that's pretty much it. Here are some examples. Names, eye colors, state of birth, yes, no answers, or your favorite band. Gather this data from anybody and you're going to get a particular word like blue eyes, or if you're a demon, perhaps red. But you really can't do any arithmetic with these or do more than just count how many observations are in each category. Nominal data is just the names of categories and the nominal level is the lowest level of measurement. 
Just because a piece of data is numeric doesn't mean it's not nominal. Here are some examples of nominal data that are less obvious. The jersey number on a football player is numeric data, and yet it doesn't convey any numeric information. They're just identifiers. A football player could have double X or a star on their, on their jersey to identify them just as well. It's still nominal data. The same with a phone number. It makes no sense to, for example, add six to a phone number or to compare two phone numbers to decide which one is bigger. It's simply nominal data. Bank card pin numbers work the same way. The next level of data after this, however, adds a little bit more structure. You'll recall that's ordinal data, and ordinal data has a natural ordering. The ord an ordinal can help you to remember this. Given three different observations, you can always tell which one belongs between the other two. But how much of a gap exists between one observation and another may be impossible to tell, or even the idea of a gap size may be meaningless. Let's look at some examples. Small, medium, and large, of course. Grades, A, B, C, and so on. And even something like this, how much do you like this video with answers from one to four indicating your degree of appreciation? The last one again is going to be numeric data, but it's only at the ordinal level because you can't do any arithmetic here. You can't say that because two minus one is the same as four minus three, that means the gap between not much and it's okay is the same as the gap between pretty good and loving it. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You don't know. And that means that we're at the ordinal level of measurement. We said that ordinal data has a natural order, and we mean a natural order here, one that's relevant to the information that the data conveys. For example, I could create a list of states and put them in order alphabetically, but that order has nothing to do with the states themselves, merely their names. We wouldn't consider this to create ordinal data. It's simply nominal data. And that takes care of the first two levels. The last two levels are always numeric data, although they differ from one another as well. Let's see what we can say about them. The third category is going to start with what letter? Well, if you remember noir, it's going to be I, and that stands for interval. As we said, interval data is always numeric, and if you think about our clock example, you'll understand why it's true that I can say that addition and subtraction always make sense with interval data. But interval data doesn't have a natural zero point. For example, Virginia and California disagree about when to start the clock. And because of that, multiplication and division generally don't make sense. Let's take a look at another example, one that's fairly familiar to you. In most parts of Europe, temperature is measured on the centigrade scale. As you may remember, zero degrees centigrade is the temperature at which water freezes. Zero degrees Fahrenheit on the scale that we use is a little bit more tricky. It's the temperature of a solution of equal parts ice and salt. Well, in either case, the choice of zero is an arbitrary choice here, and therefore both of these scales are at the interval level. And as we've pointed out in general, multiplication and division don't make sense on a scale that's only at the interval level. You might be tempted to think that 64 degrees Fahrenheit is twice as warm as 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but on the Celsius scale, these exact same temperatures come out to be 18 degrees and zero degrees. Obviously, 18 is not twice as big as zero. Again, with the zero point being arbitrary, multiplication and division don't make sense. Some examples of interval measures. Temperature, as we've just discussed. SAT scores. The smallest SAT score is 400, an entirely arbitrary number. Time of day, we've already discussed. Shoe size as well. A men's shoe size of zero is actually an eight inch long foot. And obviously this choice is an arbitrary one as well. All right, that's interval. That leaves one highest level of measurement, the kind where addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division all make sense. This is called ratio data. I've shown the ruler up top because it highly, highly it indicates the uh, main characteristic of ratio data. There's a natural meaning for the term zero. Zero inches or zero centimeters means exactly the same thing. Nothing, no length at all. And this is true for any numeric data. Most of the world's data that you see in its numeric will be at this level, and all arithmetic operations make sense. In particular, it makes sense to say that four inches is twice as long as two inches, or for that matter, that four centimeters is twice as long as two centimeters. 
Ratio scales all have a natural zero, and zero corresponds to the idea of none at all. It doesn't matter if the value zero could never actually come up. For example, if I asked people how many people were in their family, nobody would ever say zero. At least they are in their family. And yet, we understand what zero people would mean, and it's perfectly sensible to say that a family of size six is twice as big as a family of size three. Here are some examples of ratio data. The length of your foot, as opposed to your shoe size, zero inches would mean a specific value. Six inches is twice as long as three inches, if a baby's foot, for example. Hours to complete a project, the weight of a tomato, or the number of pennies in a jar. Notice that some of these are counting variables, one, two, three, four, like pennies in a jar, while others are continuous variables. It might take you 3.76 hours to complete a project. That doesn't matter in terms of deciding whether or not data is ratio or not. Okay, one more thing to keep in mind. Sometimes you'll have to figure out what level of data you're dealing with. And so you might be told something like this. I ask 10 people for their moods, five of them say happy, four say okay, and one says angry. I want to know if this is ratio data or nominal data. On the one hand, zero people makes perfectly good sense. And to say that four people is twice as many as two people makes perfectly good sense. So that sounds like ratio. On the other hand, we've got these words here. Which one is it? Well, to answer the question, consider what a single answer to the question might be. You ask a person what their mood is, they're going to respond with a word. And therefore, the data itself is nominal. The fact that we counted how many people chose a mood doesn't change the fact that we're dealing with nominal data. Okay, those are the four levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio, with an idea of what they're about. Hopefully this makes sense, because, sweetheart, we've reached the end.